Have you ever crafted with aluminum foil? Did you even think you could? I didn't either until today. What about a common kitchen funnel? Me neither. But it's something everyone has in their kitchen. And these are just two of the items that I'm going to be using in today's video because it's just another episode of Just Our Imagination. Hang on. Here we go. To start this one off, I am using the first challenge item, which is aluminum foil, or as I like to call it, tin foil. There's no rhyme or reason as to what size. I just ripped off a piece, smushed it up, started rolling it between my hands into an oval shape. And I just kept messing with it until I got it to the size and the specific shape that I was looking for. Now, I thought I, I've crafted with some weird stuff. If y'all have been with me a while, you know I've used a mousetrap. I've used plastic spoons, a toilet plunger, clothespins. And now here we are with aluminum foil. And at first, I had no clue what I was supposed to do with aluminum foil. And it wasn't until I figured out what I was going to do with the second challenge item that it all come in to an idea. So you're going to take another piece of aluminum foil. And it doesn't have to be that wide. I think mine was like maybe an inch wide. I folded it in half lengthwise. Crumpled it in the middle. And then flattened out the edges. And in case you haven't guessed, we're making bees out of aluminum foil. So that's what you see there in my hand. These are actually the wings of our bumblebees. Now I'm putting the bee, the body of the bee up against the wings, trying to get it to look balanced. So I just use my scissors, cut the foil down until the wings fit the body. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Because you don't want, you know, a little bitty bee with big old wings sticking out once i had it like i wanted it just a dot of hot glue and then i glued the body to the wings just like that this one was so much fun so once i had that done i move on to the second part and i had to figure out how am i going to paint this so i come up with model magic I've never worked with this stuff. I've seen other crafters do it. I figured, how hard can it be? And it's not. It is so easy. Because I had to have something smooth that I could paint on. Because, you know, you can't have a lumpy bumblebee. And you can't really paint on aluminum foil. So, you want to take just a really small, thin piece. And I just broke off a piece, worked it between my fingers until I got it thinned out and then I began to shape it around the aluminum foil and there I am trying to make the little stinger part then I pulled off another very small piece again working thin because I figured the thinner it was the less time it would take it to dry and set up and y'all know I have no patience so I shaped the head as best I could and anything that I had overlapping I just kind of tucked it underneath a little bit because all we're worried about is the top part of the bee. Uh, that's what's all that's going to be showing here when we get done. So I molded his little head and I'm going to do the same thing for the wings. Now you can see one there off to the top that I've got done and y'all I swear it it looks like it could be a little ghost. You know what I'm saying? I mean, how cute would that be for Halloween? Make little itty bitty ghosts. Um, this stuff is so easy. I mean, you could easily make these bees just out of the model magic. But since I had to use aluminum foil, I had to, you know, get creative. So once this stuff had cured, and I think I let it set for like, two days or something like that it was time to paint my bees so i started out 
with the head and the little stinger part first and i'm using the waverly well uh, waverly chalk paint in ink and the smallest brushes that i got and y'all know usually when i'm working with small uh parts i like to use paint markers but i challenged myself i said no robin you can do it with brushes so the reason i did the head and the tail first was so that i would hopefully get my stripes right because i wanted it black yellow black yellow and then i painted the wings white because even though i got the white model magic it does not dry like really white so once i got the body painted i took a skewer stick and very very little black paint and i'm making the little veins in their little wings i don't know what you call it i call them veins so that's what i come up with that was the smallest thing i had to make those little itty bitty vein things in their wings to see how it all comes out you're gonna have to wait until after diy number two hang on y'all don't skip this part this is the just our imagination challenge and every month it's hosted by kathy joe diys and rustic and lace diy this month's guest host is Tiffany from Simply Blessed Crafts, and each month we are given strange items that we have to craft with in our DIYs. So, their channels and a great playlist is linked in my description box. Y'all go check all those links out when you're done watching this video. Now, let's get on to the second challenge item. Challenge item number two is a funnel i got a three pack from the dollar tree and i took my box cutter and removed all of the spouts from all three pieces now these are pretty thin so they cut apart fairly easily um, if you've got a wood burner or a hot knife that would make it a lot easier i also cut off the little hanger part thingy <laughs> for lack of a better word, off of all three pieces. Now you're going to need about four packages of the Dollar Tree nautical rope. I suggest going to Walmart or somewhere else and buying a big roll of rope. Um, I think it would be more economical. So to start out, you want to cover that very bottom lip. We don't want any white showing. And all you're going to do is use a ton of hot glue and stack each row of rope on top of the one below it. Now, originally, I was going to make three separate beehives. In case you hadn't figured it out, these are beehives. But as you will see here in a few minutes, I changed my mind. So there I am just continuing to stack the rope using lots of hot glue as I go. And this is such a high-end piece, y'all. I absolutely love it. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a big thumbs up. That really helps out. And it lets me know you like what I'm putting out there for y'all. Now, this is where I decided to turn three beehives into one big one. So, I made some marks on all three. And that way, I would know where to stop wrapping each individual one. Now, I wish I'd have thought this out a little bit better. But, um anyway it is what it is so if you get a three pack of funnels just stack one on top of the other and glue them before you start wrapping because i changed my mind you know y'all know that i change my mind all the time so i just wrap each one until i hit that black mark i would also like to invite you guys that haven't subscribed yet Go ahead and click that subscribe button. It would really help me out and it shows me that you really like this content. Share it with your family and friends. That way YouTube recognizes me just a little bit more because 
right now we may be a small channel but i hope by the end of the year we're going to end up with 10,000 subscribers. That is my goal, and I know you guys can help me get there. So thank you in advance. All right, so here is where I decided I'm going to glue all three of the funnels together. I have them all wrapped, and as you see, I made a little opening there that's supposed to be the opening of the hive with an extra piece of rope. And this is optional, but I have to burn off the fuzzies because the fuzzies drive me absolutely crazy. If you are going to do that, just keep a cup of water close by. Next, I am using regular hot glue to make my honey drips. Now, if you have the colored glue sticks, perfect. You're in business. I didn't. So, I'm just going around the opening of the hive making honey drips letting it pool in certain places and once the glue has completely hardened i'll go back in and paint it with some yellow paint this looks so good y'all i can't wait for you to see what it looks like in the end i think it's my favorite project my favorite two projects actually because the the bees and this one oh my gosh they look so good together now i'm using king's gold i like the color but when it dried it was a little bit too dark i thought but i go ahead here and i'm i'm dabbing this on so if you use acrylic paint i found it was better to dab it on rather than try to brush it on um but in the background there you see i have the waverly maze chalk paint and in the end, I do end up going over this King's Gold with that maize chalk paint. I think it just looks better. I think it looks more realistic because, as I said, this King's Gold just dried way too dark for me. But you use whatever color of yellow or glue sticks, whatever you have. Just use that. So once that part was done, I'm going to dress this thing up. So I took some leaves from my stash. I got some sunflowers and I'm just going to attach this to the top using regular hot glue. And now it's time for our bees that we made in the first DIY to be attached down. And this little fella is going straight for the center of the sunflower. These turned out so stinking cute, y'all. Oh, I love it so, so much. I want you guys to let me know what you think when you see the final reveal. I'm so excited for this. Once all my bees were in place, I thought, we're going to light this puppy up. So I had these, um, it's, it's lighted greenery garland stuff that i got from dollar tree gosh i don't i don't know i've had it a while and all i'm gonna do is just take little bitty dots of hot glue and glue it down in a couple of spots just to hold it in place now i didn't glue it down to the wood round because obviously i wouldn't be able to reach the battery pack to turn it on and off but look how amazing this turned out guys i love it there it is all lit up this is so so pretty you guys let me know did i nail it or did i fail it comment down below and let me know your thoughts on the bees and this beautiful hive Our third challenge item is a napkin. I'm starting out with a Dollar Tree frame. I really like that rustic look. I'm also using this laminated burlap craft sheet that I got from burlapfabric.com. I will link their website down below. So I cut out a piece of that to fit inside the frame. And then I have this wood bee that I got in a package from Michaels. I gave it one coat of Waverly White chalk paint. And now I applied a good generous coat of Mod Podge, let that dry completely. 
And now I'm taking this really pretty napkin down to one ply. And I love the country look of this. And I know y'all are thinking, what is she doing to this bee? <laughs> Once that Mod Podge had dried, I placed my napkin down onto the wood bee, trying to get it where I want it. Y'all just have faith, trust the process. Now, if you've never used the iron-on method for um, decoupaging, this is practically foolproof. Once you lay your napkin down, you're going to put a piece of parchment paper on top of your napkin. You're going to use an iron. A household iron will work just fine. Just make sure you have the steam turned off. I start in the center and go out to the edges, and this is going to reactivate the Mod Podge. There are no wrinkles using this method. I absolutely love it, and my gosh, this, this bee turns out so cute. I can't wait for y'all to see it. Now, you can find these little mini craft irons just about anywhere. Amazon has them really inexpensive. Now, once this has had a chance to cool off, take a piece of fine grit sandpaper. And a lot of mistakes I see people do is they want to rub um, the excess off by going back and forth or up and down on the sides. Don't do that. You want to sand away from the edge of your project because if you go back and forth um, or up and down you're going to run the risk of lifting um, your paper or napkin or whatever you've mod podge down off of your project and nobody wants that so for those that don't know or may be new to crafting fine grit sandpaper is um, like the higher the number the finer the grit the lower the number, the coarser the grit. So I used a uh, 150 grit, I believe. I laid everything out. I did not put the glass back into the frame. I'm simply gluing this bee down. Look how cute. So country, so farmhouse. I made a simple bow and I will be attaching one of those small little sunflowers that I think I got from Hobby Lobby for like 90% off after fall or whatever. But I think this is just enough. It's simple, but it's rustic, it's country, it's farmhouse. And I thought this was a pretty cute way to use a napkin. What do you guys think? Did I nail it? Did I fail it? Let me know your thoughts. This video was such fun to make. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I certainly had fun making these DIYs. Please leave me a comment below and share this video out. Subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate you guys so very much. And until next time, y'all go get your craft on. Bye.